America rapper 50 Cent said, when they came to Nigeria, they saw poverty. He used to think that where he came from, the United States of America, that they were extremely poor. But when he came to Nigeria in 2004, he actually saw the full meaning of poverty and what it stands for. According to him, he said, after I went to Nigeria, I realized that life in the U.S. is good. I used to think I was from the bottom. All my life, I've never seen anything as harsh as the neighborhood. All his life, he has never seen anything as harsh as his own neighborhood. The driver took us to forget about housing project, where the elevators end good, no AC, no steady electricity, and others cause they didn't even have that. What we call suffering is what they see as luxury. That's coming from 50 Cent. What they called suffering in the United States of America is what we see as luxury. In 2004, 50 Cent came to Nigeria to perform, and it was organized by the Bureau. They brought him to Nigeria to perform alongside Idris, Idris Abu Karim, Two Face, Peace Grass at that time. Of course, you guys know exactly what happened, which I'm going to go into later in details. But I'm mainly focusing now on his experiences. 50 Cent is regarded as one of those top guys in the United States of America because of his rough background. Just imagine all those rappers, Jay-Z, Pop Daddy, 50 Cent, uh, Dr. Dre, Eminem, and uh, 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 Lil Wayne, Birdman, and so many of them who came from a rough neighborhood. The Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur, who came from a really rough neighborhood that we over here are looking, uh, are looking up to. Yeah, there are some Nigerians who are looking up to them as a point of, uh, point of motivations. There are some Nigerians. But I want to let those Nigerians know that 50 Cent, who is regarded as one of the top G abroad, who has went through that rough neighborhood, the 50 Cent is even surprised. He's even surprised that you guys are living in such, in this condition. He said what they went through what made them an OG in their own community, what they went through to actually make them an, an OG today is what you guys see as luxury here. If you have a house with electricity, with Ivata and everything, and you have a, a, a trans, a good roads, transportation and the rest, and there are also good medical facilities and everything. Hmm? All those things you see someone having was the top bottom, was the bottom of what their 50 cent went through. So my guy, there is a need to rethink again. Eh? By the time you start using 50 cent at the point of reference, seeing him as somebody who came from the rough neighborhood and was able to actualize where he is today, please. You have to sit back a little bit and say, no, you are experiencing worse than what 50 Cent went through. And he confirmed it himself when he came to Nigeria. He said he saw poverty. Poverty told him high 50 Cent in Nigeria. Poverty shook his hand while he came to Nigeria. He saw poverty. And what he even saw we are still regarded as luxury over here. And he still saw it as poverty. Because 50 Cent was well treated by Dan, their Idris Abu Karim and their Two Face and their Peace Square who were there as at that time. And yet, 50 Cent still regard your own luxuries of what you gave him as 
bottom of what he has ever gone through. Not even close to the bottom of what he has ever gone through. Come on, man. Well, and up to this day, that was 2004, years ago, about 20 years ago. Up to this day, 20 years later, we are still talking about electricity. Many houses cannot afford AC. We are still talking about minimal wages. We are still talking about good health care facilities. We are still talking about good governance. We are still talking about the same thing. In fact, it's even way more worse now because of the hunger and the insecurity and, of course, the dollar. And, uh, of course, you see the inflation, constant increase of prices, and meanwhile, income still remains the same. Meanwhile, salary still remains the same. Our possession power is going down, reducing. We are still talking about that up to today, 20 years later. I wish 50 Cent can come back to Nigeria to check if indeed Nigeria has uh, developed way better than what he meant it. And let him also give us another review of what he saw. A man who came to Nigeria and said he saw poverty. Poverty said, hello, how are you doing 50 Cent? Welcome to Nigeria. And 50 Cent was shocked. That even me, that I called myself an OG, that I came from the bottom, I've never seen such bottom before. And even the thing that you guys are regarding as luxury, that was his lowest bottom. It's crazy, man. And it just, it, it, it's just so crazy because we are still experiencing it. Well, let's talk about Idris Abu Karim. And of course, you know, a lot of people are not happy with Idris Abu Karim narrating what happened between himself and 50 Cent as at that time. So people are saying that Idris Abu Karim wasn't a freedom fighter, just like he claimed that he fought for Nigerians, that he stood against so many other things, stood against 50 Cent. People say it's a big lie. Idris Abu Karim was standing for himself and was being greedy about it. 50 Cent was a big lie. Uh, some musicians like P Square and some others said it was a big lie. In fact, I'm going to play you some few footages coming from none other than, firstly, from Tony Tetula, who was kind of like surprised that 50, uh, that uh, Idris Abu Karim were making all sorts of entrances to make it look like he was the one, he is, he is the pioneer of what so many Nigerian entertainers are enjoying today. Under the bridge, and we have to be saying this on computer video right here. Say, wow, you know, called Benga. He said, Benga, well, you're not always around. Let me just stay with you in that house. Wow, rising and that was the first time we shouted, see shelter over my head. Mm -hmm. Wow, I had a bathroom bath. Hey, wow. You know, so I think I gave me some money to go shopping, buy food, stuff like that. Two months later, the song was all over Nigeria. But they then I called me and Eddie. And I said, you guys should go to Ilori and go and perform. When you get to Ilori, come back. You have an appointment at Elizade Plaza. <laughs> so we went to Ilori. That was where we met Tony Tetula. Um, so that was how Tony joined uh, us. Uh, you know. Uh, so Tony joined us because is a lie. we needed to record more songs. Uh -huh. And the mom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew one thing desperately mm -hmm. yeah, all this. Mm -hmm. So okay, come now, let's do it. Ah. That was how we became three. Ah. So when we came back, we now went ah. to Zadi Plaza. Um it was pretty Tony said, I'm highly disappointed in this guy. He's a bloody liar. How could a grown man like this be telling lies? Now God will punish you the lie. 
Then, yes yeah, so or no, that person who was still among Jesus Abukarim Kroos at that time, Jesus Abukarim lied about. Let's also hear from him. Then, the, the person is a Hedi Mutana. Omolulu agreed. Omolulu liked it. He did not met Omolulu a week after I had met him and took that sound that I gave him and took it to Omolulu and told Omolulu that oh, no, I have a new sound, I have a new sound. Uh, uh, this is what's happening. Uh, but I need a singer, I need a singer for this. What? He told Omolulu that he needed a singer as if it was his sound. Bro, Idris is a treacherous bastard. Idris is a cheat. Nigerians to stop listening to Idris. I've been quiet all this while I, because I didn't want trouble. I don't want people to think that we keep fighting. We are keep fight, that we are grown up. We shouldn't be fighting anymore. But bro, what is mine cannot be taken away from me. I will die before what is mine is taken from me. I swear to God Almighty. Idris, Idris made money from the government one time. He said, Idris don't help anybody. Now himself, you know. Idris made 120 or 150 million from government. When we were all down, I was down and out. This was a guy that I brought to eat food. Oh. I was down. I went to Asaba. I, I was tired. I went to Asaba for four years and stayed. I came back to Lagos. I called Idris. See what I'm going through, bro. See what I'm going through. Ha! He did say, okay, I should, I should come to this hotel. I will drive to that hotel. I don't see Idris. Hey, 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 sorry, Eddie. Hey, something came out. I did for this hotel. I drove there. Nothing. I, I had to drive to five hotels before I saw Idris. Before I mean, before I saw the hotel that he was in. And guess what? All this while that he was on the phone telling me to come to this hotel, he was not even in any of the hotels. He had left. I met the manager of the last hotel that he was in when he called me. The manager said, ah, he just left just now. Eh? He just left. Bro, I don't see any help till today. So, the, the, the biggest help is just go say he helped me. He say, ah, and I insult. Now, my boss, I give the money that time. Twice. He sent me five, five, five thousand. Five thousand twice. Five thousand. I've never given it this five thousand in my life. Was, he was the one fighting for the industry. He said, he's, he, He's fighting for the industry, they mad. How can he fight for the industry? Who is he to fight for the industry? If he's fighting for the industry, it's a collective effort. Every artist fights for this industry. Every artist has... Okay, guys, uh, that is a few story of Idris. But I wasn't even talking about mainly Idris. I'm talking about the poverty that 50 Cent saw. Well, and uh, Idris just came about, just, to, uh, just, uh, just came to my mind. But meanwhile, let me know exactly how you feel, guys. I mean, thank you very much for watching the boy again. I'm Slink. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. And make sure you like this video, comment, and share it on all social media platforms. Have a wonderful day. Bye.